Ah, oui. Anything less than best would be an insult to the Almighty. I guess so. I never thought of it like that. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. A statue of a knight holding a staff and a scroll. The statue had any secrets. It was concealing them pretty well. A scroll was a symbol of scholarship. I knew that much. A scholarly knight. That rang a bell. A very Spanish bell. The lens fitted into the end of the scroll like a hand into a glove. Hey! A Knight Templar burning at the stake and a date. Let me see. M C C C X I V. That's. Thirteen fourteen. Hello again, Father. Bonjour, Monsieur. How pleasant to speak to you again. Did you know that the center window conceals an image of a man burning at the stake? The burning man? What, you knew? That there was a hidden image? No. But the church has a reputation for being haunted. Many times, people have claimed to have seen a burning man in the window. But when others, they look, there is nothing. Perhaps the light has to be just so for the figure to appear. Yeah, or maybe you need a special lens. What do you make of this chalice? It uh, certainly looks very old. About as old as this church, I think. There yeah. Seems to be an engraving on it. Yeah? What does it say? I do not know. It is very tarnished. With your permission, uh, I could try polishing it. Uh, I promise I will be very careful. That'd be very good of you. This uh, shouldn't take very long. Feel free to look around. Okay, thanks. I was surprised Philip LeBel had left this place alone. The second stone knight in a row of four lay on the church floor. A stone knight lay in full stone armor, blank eyes looking at the ceiling. Carrying all that armor around must have been hard work. I wondered if this guy had died in combat. A stone knight lay at the end of a row of four. Just think, there's a dead guy under there. A stone knight lay on the church floor. Biblical references engraved into the tomb edge to guide his way to the next world. I guess. A knight there in the company of his fellows. Hello again, Father. Hey, thanks. It is my pleasure, Monsieur. What was the writing on the chalice? It was not writing. Uh, my mistake. It was a coat of arms. The remarkable thing is that it seems very familiar. Yeah? 
Oui, I think I have seen it on that wool tomb in the far corner. That winged horse is quite distinctive. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. No. It couldn't be. Could it? Now that my attention had been drawn to it, there was no mistake. There was no name on it. But the coat of arms was undeniably the Pegasus of the De Vasconcellos family. I'd found the last resting place of Don Carlos. My eye was drawn to the biblical references carved into the edge of the tomb. Hey, maybe these biblical references mean something. Psalms 32.7 John 4.11 Corinthians 1, 4, 5, and just one more, Psalms 22, 21. I may not be perfect, but I've got a memory like a steel trap. The chalice had led me to these inscriptions, but it looked like a happy coincidence to me. After all, the de Vasconcellos arms were already on the manuscript. Nope, I was still convinced that the chalice had some significance all of its own. Hi, Andre. Hello, Georgie. While I was in Syria, I discovered a strange pagan statue. It was like a head with three bearded faces. Horrible. That sounds as if it could be Baphomet, the idol described by the Templars. The poor Knights of Christ had an idol that looked like that? Allegedly. The description of the idol came from the evidence extracted by the Inquisition. Mind you, not one statue or idol was ever found on Templar property. Until now, that is. Just last month, a statue of Baphomet was unearthed right here in Paris. Where? At the Institut Hermetique de Naval. The statue is beneath the foundations. It was discovered by some workmen while renovating the building. Can you tell me any more about the statue of Baphomet? It's a fearful image, even now. A bearded head. The base of the statue is carved with Templar symbols. One of the workmen noticed a curious stain at the base. He claimed it looked like blood. Blood? That's right. What do you make of this cup, Andre? It's a 14th century communion vessel. Spanish, probably. You sure know your onions. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome.